I spent three days at this year's EGX Rest, sampling all the digital delights on offer, and what follows are four games that really caught my eye, either through innovation, originality, or just plain good old fashioned fun. It may look all cute and innocent at first glance, but don't let the gorgeous SNES-inspired graphics of Titan Souls fool you. This game has the potential to reduce you to tears. In a good way. It's as punishing as Dark Souls, but with the addictive, just one more go gameplay stylings of Hotline Miami, and each enemy encounter is dripping with tension. Everything about Titan Souls makes you feel insignificant against the game's boss type only bad guys. Your tiny character will die after just one hit, while his weapon, a solitary arrow, leaves you defenceless every time you take a shot. You can run round and retrieve the arrow of course, but by willing it back into your hands force pull style, it stands a chance of scoring a second hit on the enemy. The trade off to this however is that using telekinesis roots you to the spot and that's not ideal when the only sure way to avoid becoming a squishy mess on a titan's soul is to stay constantly on the move. As with most games of this type, practice makes perfect and the feeling of beating a seemingly impossible boss is exhilarating. Expect to hear legions of gamers screaming obscenities at their PS4s and Vitas on the 15th of April. Gang Beasts was one of my highlights of last year's Resd Expo, and this year Swordy follows firmly in its footsteps with a similar kind of wibbly wobbly control scheme and hilarious gameplay that mixes luck, skill and chaos in equal measure. The premise is simple, pick up a weapon from the arena floor and bash your opponent with it until they fall down and stop moving. The execution of that premise however is a whole different ball game. Each weapon handles slightly differently and instead of spamming an attack button, players must use the thumbstick to spin their fighter and build up enough momentum to deliver a killing blow. If you nail the spin you can really put some weight behind your swing and successfully clobbering your foes is remarkably satisfying. Predictably the chances of fluffing your moves and mistiming your attacks are pretty high, which of course leads to the usual calamitous consequences associated with these types of games. As part of the ID at Xbox program, Swordy will be swinging into action on the Xbox One sometime this year, and the final build is going to support up to 8 players. Just imagine the carnage, it's gonna be beautiful. Vomit. That's what my answer would be if someone asked me what you would get if you crossed Wipeout with Oculus Rift. The proper answer to that question though would actually be Radial G, a game that is surprisingly a lot less pukey than the concept suggests. Firmly inspired by 90s racers, complete with an obligatory prodigy style soundtrack, Radial G plonks you in the cockpit of a super fast space racer and sends you whizzing around cylindrical tracks full of boost pads, ramps and speed sapping obstacles. It never quite reaches the terminal velocity of Wipeout, but nevertheless it's super speedy and the sense of presence you get from the rift is great. The neon lit tubular tracks that twist and turn at impossible angles complement the 3D really well, allowing you to look up and around the race course ahead of you. Your stomach may lurch roller coaster style every so often, especially when you hit a 90 degree bend in the track, but thanks to some clever programming and level design, the sim sickness is kept to a surprising minimum. Playable right now in Steam Early Access with a Wipeout style third person mode built especially for non-rifters, the future looks bright for Radial G. It's a great example of VR done well and if you need any more proof of its potential, the fact that Sony's Shui Yoshida recently snapped it up for future release on the PS4's Morpheus VR headset should convince you it's a winner. Something something FMV Night Trap. 
Yes, just like Sega's notoriously poop Night Trap, her story is a full motion video game, but that's where the similarities end, because unlike Night Trap, her story is actually good. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Set in 1994 and played from the viewpoint of a person operating a police computer terminal, her story is a crime fiction game where clues must be pieced together from archived suspect interviews. While the actual gameplay is limited to entering search terms into a database and organising folders in a replica of an early 90s Windows desktop, the narrative experience is as rich and compelling as they come. The use of live action clips and the non-linear way players interact with the story keeps the mystery alive, and in true whodunit style, questions are often answered with more questions as you go deeper down the rabbit hole. It's not for everyone mind, the player is pretty much left to his or her own devices with no indication of whether or not they're on the right path. This slow pacing and unstructured gameplay may be frustrating for some, but those armchair sleuths among us who are hankering for a new kind of experience should definitely have her story on their most wanted list. These police archives will be released to the public sometime in 2015 on Mac, PC and iOS.